Hey guys, this is Alan from Photoshop is Fun, and today what I want to do is show you how I've been using the radio filter. Now this is just a quick tutorial um, just to kind of expose you to the, um, the feature and so that you might be able to use this in some of the work that you're doing as well. Um, just uh, so you know, I am using the Creative Cloud version of Photoshop. So um, if you're using an older version, you may not have this uh, functionality. And for that, I'm sorry and uh, can only <clears throat> suggest that you uh, continue to save your pennies and um, maybe do the subscription to Creative Cloud. I think it's definitely worth it if you can fit it into your budget. All of that said, for those of you who are and have this feature enabled, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, you can see here, this is the picture that we're going to be using today. And as always, I like to duplicate um, my base layer so that I can always compare it to uh, where I land. So I'm going to do Control J to do that. Another way to do it is just simply to drag the base layer down to the um, new layer icon. That would do it as well. But Control, Control J is obviously a lot faster. So once I've done that and I have that layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and go up to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. Now normally in my um, image processing workflow, I would change some of these global settings here and I'd get my white balance all right, etc. But instead what I'm going to do today is just get straight to the radio filter. Now if you look up here on the far right, you'll see the radio filter icon. And so I'm just going to go ahead and select that. And then I get a um, large set of um, options here as you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you don't want to zoom in too close. So how I'm going to use this in this particular picture is I'm going to use it for the eyes. And then I'm going to also use it to um, cast some light on our left, um, the subject's right side of her face, just to kind of um, brighten that a little bit and bring some evenness in, in the tonality with the left side. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is start with the eyes. And to do that, actually... Hang on just a second, let's back up. Um, I typically like to split my screen. So if you look down here um, in Camera Raw, I'm gonna click the little, little Y, and then you can see I have a before and after, and that way I can, um, as I work, I can, um, I can see my progress against the original, which I really like to do. Okay, so I've done that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start with uh, my first radial um, filter. And, and I'm going to do the eyes. And so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. If you click on the um, green square, you can move it. And what I want to do is I want to get it down. You can see on the, um, uh, the north-south points and then the east-west of the circle, you can um, use those to size it. And I'm going to go ahead and just make that just a tad bigger. Maybe on this side too. Okay, so that's about where I want it. Now, so that I can get this out of my way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click um, on the overlay um, box to uncheck it. Now, I'm still using that. I just can't um, see all of the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the overlay of the circle. So it's kind of out of the way and I can work here. So as you can see, I can do all sorts of things. So I'm going to start with exposure. And uh, in terms of the exposure, I'm going to probably... Um, brighten up her eyes a little bit, and I'm going to probably set that around, probably around 7580. It's probably a good starting point. And then with contrast, typically with blue eyes, I like to boost contrast. And I'm going to go ahead and um, settle with 30 for now. And again, I can compare the two. So on the left, I have the original, and on the right, I have um, the work that I'm doing um, to make changes. Highlights, again, you can play around with. You can see um, I've already kind of covered in another video, my camera raw video, what some of these settings are and what they do. So if you if you want that information, go back and, and watch that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring highlights probably to about 25. Shadows I won't touch <clears throat> for uh, this particular picture. Actually, the highlights I'm going to dial back a bit. Probably down to about 15. And then blacks, I do like to boost blacks a little bit. There we go. And then clarity is the other pretty important one with regard to um, uh, with regard to uh, doing eyes in this particular filter. I'm going to go ahead and go up to probably about 20. And you can see that gives them some depth. So they're a little brighter, 
um, than they are on the left, and they have a little bit more depth. Again, I'm not going for anything radical. If I was doing some kind of fantasy, um, you know, artwork or something, I'd, I'd be a lot more dramatic in terms of my coloring and whatnot. But for what I want out of this picture, that's that's about the right level. And then, you, of course, you can always change your saturation too. That's crazy. You can desaturate if you wanted to. I generally boost saturation about 10 or 15 percent. And just leave it at that. Sharpness is always a good idea for eyes. And there you go. Um, actually, I'm not a big fan of that saturation level. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty much what I would do for that eye. Now I'm just going to duplicate that by um, I'm going to turn back on overlay so I can see things here. And I'm just going to draw another one here for this eye. And I probably won't make too many changes to it, even though the light hitting that eye is a little bit different. Um, so if, you know, if this were a photo that I were using for, um, I don't know, some kind of uh, commercial work, then maybe I would. I'm going to turn overlay back off <clears throat> so that I can see it. So you can see the settings do look quite different on this eye because of the way the light is, is uh, reflecting off of it. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and turn down the exposure. And for the most part that um, lines up um, and makes the two the two eyes look a little more um, uniform so and that makes sense too right because the exposure on that side of her face is um, definitely um, higher than it is on the other side of her face so there's the two eyes you can see the difference between the left and the right side now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create one more on this side of her face of course, that's too much, so I'm going to bring this, I'm going to uh, make the oval more narrow, and then I'm going to bring it over to this side, and then I'm going to turn these back off, and that's still too bright. I'm going to go ahead, and I don't really want to make any changes to anything other than the exposure for this last, um, uh, for this last radial filter, so I'm going to go ahead and neutralize all these back down to their zero values just by double-clicking on, um, <clears throat> on the slider. And then all I'm working with here is um, the exposure slider. And again, just uh, I'm just going to go up half a stop, and that is about what I want. So you can see the difference between the left and the right, and that is the radial filter. Until the next tutorial, um, I am Alan, and I hope that you continue to enjoy Photoshop and take advantage of this type of technique in your own photography. Take care. Okay, so I think if you're using this for the first time, Photoshop may default um, the value of the circle that you draw to being on the outside of the um, outside of the uh, radial circle instead, rather than the inside, as I showed in my tutorial. So if that's the case, the setting is just down here. You have outside and inside. So if you just switch it to inside, then it'll um, go ahead and uh, you know add all of the effects to the inner part of the circle rather than the outer. So if you're having that problem, that should be the solution for it.